Welcome to the Destiny Church Tees Valley podcast. As you listen, it is our prayer that you were transformed through faith, hope and love. Good morning. Are you all excited about being in a new decade? <laughs> I'll tell you, it's one thing about when you know the Lord... That, uh, that the older you get, the, re- the more you realize, the nearer to seeing him you get. And when that is the dream of your life, and that's the goal of your life, it's exciting. Amen? And uh, I know for some of you, you, especially you young ones, are probably thinking, I don't want to go just yet. And I understand that because God has got things for us, but it is exciting to know that one day we will know him and we will be like him because we will see him. And that is something to look forward to, isn't it? And so uh, we're in a series on the Daniel plan, particularly just looking at some of the issues behind it and and about the need for change, that we want to be transformed Um, That's the motto of us as a church, is transforming lives through faith, hope, and love. And so that's what we want to do. We want to be changed. Uh, We want to be transformed people who are able to bring transformation to others. And, uh, And God wants us to be involved in bringing transformation. Now, last week we looked at initially at goals. And, um, and so we kind of got a little bit of a way through there. And so I said that this week I would finish it off, uh, hopefully. And so last week we just talked quite simply that there is the need to have a vision for change. There is a need to have a vision for what God has for your life, for your family, for the church, for the connect group that you're a part of, or your business, whatever it might be that you're a part of. What is God's vision what is it that God has planned for, for us? And in order for us to be able to see that vision come to pass, we've got to have the faith to be able to, uh, to believe for it, to believe for change. And so if we're going to change and we're going to have the faith for, for change, we're going to be able to uh, actually see what we see, um, then we are needing to set some goals in God. And so uh, we looked at that. The first uh, aspect we saw of goal setting was that it is a spiritual discipline. In other words, it, it, setting goals can be spiritual. It can also be unspiritual. It doesn't, by defining it, by just by doing goal setting, doesn't make it a spiritual activity, but it depends what goals you're setting as to the, as to the impact that it can have on you. And so we shared a little bit about that, that goal setting can be an act of worship. Um, Setting financial goals can be an act of worship. It can be a spiritual thing. I wonder, let me ask you a question. Have you set any financial goals? Now, for some of you who are saying, yeah, I have set some financial goals. Well, let me ask you it in another way. What financial goals have you set in order to be able to give into the kingdom of God, in able to give into the church, to give into the mission of God? Have you set a budget so that you're able to... to, uh, to Uh, have finances available so that when you're led by the Holy Spirit, you have money available to be able to meet a need. Because I believe we need to be prepared at all times, and it doesn't matter the amount, but what it does matter is that whole goal setting, that vision, to be able to say, God, use me to be able to bless other people. And so God will bless you when you are wanting to bless other people, when you're wanting to advance the kingdom of God, when you're wanting the things that you have to be able to to further the work of God. I'm amazed at how many times people want uh, God to bless them in their personal way, want God to bless their business, want God to bless their family on whatever their opportunities, their career, and they've got financial goals, but it's just to be for themselves. And God is not looking for that. That's why goal setting is important, that it's it's not just about setting goals, because not all goals are good goals. 
Not all goals are good goals. Not all goals are godly goals. But goals can be godly if we set them prayerfully. And if we ask God about our goals, we say, God, what should be the goals for our life? And we bring him into it. And so it is important to do that. Maybe have you got some goals to serve in the church? Have you got some goals to be able to say, I want to be more committed to you? Have you got goals to say, Lord, I want to worship you more? I want to, be, I want to know you more. I want to love you more. What goals have you set in order that it doesn't just happen? You see, life doesn't just, you don't just suddenly become more spiritual. You don't just suddenly become great in ministry. It needs some devotional goals. It needs some goals to be able to set you on a path so that you, you because you become what you're committed to. So let me ask you, what are you committed to? Are you committed to the fellowship of God, of God's people? Are you committed to, to developing that? If you're planted in the local church, and that this applies whatever you could be in the world, if you're planted in a local church, can that church rely on you? Can the people around you know that you are there? Come what may, because your goal is to be fully committed and devoted to the work of God. These things are important to us to understand. So I want to say that to, that was last week. First part of the last week, we need to be that. Goals focus your energy. We talked about that. We know, talked about know the difference between urgent and important. And it's something that's so easy for all of us to get sucked in to things that are urgent. Uh, but Paul said this, I do not run without a goal. I fight like a boxer who is hitting something, not just the air. I want to say to you, I'm a good shadow boxer. <laughs> I'll fight anybody as long as they're not physically there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, but what I'm saying is, Paul's saying we don't we don't live without a focus. We're not living aimlessly. We're not just wondering, oh Lord, bless me today, and then we wander through the day as if like kind of there's no plan for the day. God has a plan for every single day of your life, and we should be thinking about that. And that's why when Tracy was talking about together. together Together we can spur each other on. We can help each other. When we go to the restaurant and Tracy can be there and she begins saying, Jonathan, you need to eat some carrots. Whatever it might be. Do you know what I mean? We spur one another. And she could say, now what would God want you to eat, Jonathan? And then I go, oh, no, no, no. Do you know what I'm trying to say? We help. And so we've got to have some good understand that it can focus our energy, focus our life, so that we've got things. It goes out, stretch our faith. We talked about that, didn't we? Being statements of faith. What goals have you got that are a statement of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? What is a statement of your faith in terms of what you're believing God for, for your family, for the church, for, for this community? Have you got things around that be for your neighbours? Have you got some goals for your neighbours? You know, do you, do you actually have a plan to reach your neighbours for Jesus Christ? I wonder about that because that's one of the things we need to do. We need to be conscious. We need to be diligent. We need to be, be kind of planning through what God wants us to do. So our faith can get stretched. It can become greater than it is. And we said last week that the question is not how big do we think we are. The question is how big do we think God is. Because see, that's where our faith is. Our faith in him not in ourself. It's not in our accomplishments. It's not what we can do. It's in who he is. We talked about goals, build your character. And uh, we talked about giving God something to work on because God wants to work in us. He wants to work on us. He wants to work through us. But sometimes all we're concerned about is kind of what God wants to do. With, uh, you know, we, we've, got, we've got a goal for something and we, well, we get so caught up in accomplishing that goal that we fail to, to realize that actually it's how we go about that goal, the journey of that goal, that is just as important as reaching that goal. In fact, it's more important than reaching a goal because whether we reach the goal or not is in God's hands but if we pursue what God has put into our heart we can become what he wants us to become in the process and so that was what we did in other words God is changing wants to change our attitude to things how do you respond to criticism how do you respond to failure how do you respond to life's difficulties because when you go for something there's going to be problems there's going to be difficulties 
difficulties. There's going to be delays. There's going to be dead ends. It's going to seem like everything has gone pear-shaped. But if you focus, God can do something in you. He can change you. He can do... Because I want to say to you, resilience and perseverance and the stretching of your faith doesn't happen when things are going well. It's when they're in the tough times, when God has said to you, love me and love me first, serve me, tell people about me, whatever it might be. And then in the midst of that, problems come and somebody wants to throw you into the lion's den. And then we go, oh, hang on a minute. And so it's in those times when we're in the workplace or wherever it might be and there's an opportunity to not be who God has called us to be that is a testing of our character, of who we ought to be. And we've got to understand that this life is is preparation for eternity. This is like nursery school. This is just kind of planning for for what God wants us to be. And we talked about that, about... God's goal is for us to be like his son, Jesus Christ. And the fifth thing that we looked at last week was that goals give you hope. I want to say to you, hope is such a powerful thing. In fact, uh, um, when when you look at hope... If you're in a relationship and you, the things are going bad, things are going sour, and there's, there's tensions and there's all sorts of things. And the amount of, um, I was um, reading about a, a famous counsellor and he was saying that when people come to him for counselling, when they come for their marriage counselling, he says, I understand that the only thing I have to do is to give them hope. If I can give them just 5% hope, it will make a massive difference. In other words, a very small amount of hope can make a massive difference in our relationship. I want to say to you, where is your hope? Is your hope in him? Or is your hope in, in, in someone else or something else? We can, we, so in other words, it's all about, that's why our goals that we have can give us hope. Because they give us future. They give us a sense of where we're going, doesn't it? Or what we're going to do. I mean, you, you, I'm sure you've read of the stuff that in, when, when, uh, uh, when, when with Germany and Nazism and Auschwitz and these kind of things, that over and over again, the survivors, what was the common thing with those that survived in the midst of thousands and thousands of people dying around them? What made some people able to survive and others not to was the simple thing that they had something to look forward to. They had hope in the future. And I want to say to you, that's a big thing for us, is to have a hope. And my cry to you is have a hope in Jesus Christ. Have a hope in who he is. Have a hope in that he's an anchor. Uh, Someone that even though, like an anchor, uh, you put an anchor over and your boat or whatever it might be, a ship, it could be however large, you put an anchor over, that anchor goes to the bottom and goes to the seabed, it doesn't move. But the ship can be going to and fro. The waves can be taking it up and down. It could be all over the place, but at the end of the day, it's fixed. And our hope needs to be fixed in Jesus Christ and no other. It needs to be him. And if we have our goals in our day and I say my hope is in you, then knowing that whatever the day faces, there's going to be times in your days that you have uh, uh, some extreme things. You might fear things. There might be problems happening. There might be all sorts of issues. But at the end of the day, you can say, but my hope is in Jesus. You know why? Because hope is a person. The Word of God says God is the source of hope. Of all hope. He is the source of hope. He is the one. Amen. So that was last week. (coughs) So this week I want us to quickly look at what kind of goals does God bless? What kind of goals does God bless? And this is important for us because God doesn't just bless anything. Yes? He doesn't just bless whatever you want him to bless. As I said earlier, not every goal is a good goal. Hitler had a lot of goals, but they weren't good goals. And many times we'd look at Hitler and say he was a great leader. Yeah, but he wasn't a good leader. 
And there is a difference and an understanding. We've got to understand that some of our goals are not necessarily good goals. They can be selfish goals. They can be sinful goals. They can be goals that are just about unrighteousness. So we've got to understand that not every goal is a godly goal. And so we've got to focus and understand and think about that. So what kind of goals does God bless? What kind of goals please God? Well, I'll tell you what the first one is. It's quite simply this. God is pleased with goals that aim to please him. That might sound a bit simple, but that's, that's the issue. Is Are you living to please him? Because godly goals bring glory to God. 1 Corinthians 10 says this, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it most of the time, some of the time, some of the things for the glory of God. Is that right? It says all things for the glory of God. Now I've got to be honest, like I said earlier, when I sit down in a restaurant, I don't automatically and naturally think, now, what would God want me to eat? I don't do that. That's, 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 you know what I'm trying to say? But I tell you what, if I did do that, do you think I might be a bit healthier? It's simple, isn't it? Yes. In other words, everything we do, the diet that we have, the exercise that we have, the friends that we have, the things that we focus on, they're all things that can be done for the glory of God. The issue is about having a right motivation, a right attitude towards these things. So the kind of goal that brings glory to God is, for example, a goal that says that you set a goal that helps you to know him better. A goal that helps you to serve him more. A goal that helps you to love other people more. A goal that brings some aspect that, that fulfills God's plan for your life. It brings something out. If it's a goal to obey him more, that's a goal he's going to bless. Amen? You see, many things can be done for the glory of God. Diet, exercise, work, our relationships. The question is, does your goal draw you closer to Jesus? Simple question. Does your goal... Help you to want to serve Jesus more. Does your goal help you to love people more? 2 Corinthians 5 says this, We make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. In other words, whatever our circumstance, that is the issue of our life. Yes, we've got to make our goal to be, to please him. Secondly, godly goals are motivated by love. They're not motivated by peer pressure. They're not motivated by guilt. You feel guilty if you don't do it. They're not, not motivated by greed. They're not motivated by revenge. It's amazing how many people have goals because they're being revengeful. Uh, goals for being material, the materialism, they just think I want more, I want more. Goals for pride, I want to achieve this, so people will think I am this, I have achieved this status, the accolades that I've got, that people will do that. Pride is an, a big issue for a lot of goal setting. Um, the desire to conform or envy or jealousy, any of these things, they're not goals that are motivated by love. And 1 Corinthians 16 says, everything you do must be done with love. And so we've got to understand that. And so not only do we have, first of all, for our, uh, our motivation to be love, but it needs to be, first and foremost, love for Jesus. When we're setting goals, you need to say, does this help me to love Jesus more? And I believe that's so important. Galatians 2.20, uh, Paul says there, the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I want to say to you, I love Jesus. And even if he did nothing else for me, he has already done far more than I could have ever asked or imagined. In other words, he doesn't owe me a thing. 
God has already done far more than I could ever ask or imagine. He's done such great things that the day that he bore my sin on the cross and he rose again from the dead so that I could be raised from the dead. Yes, it's the resurrection that makes the cross so significant. Yes, and because of that, I know that whatever he, he's done enough. And so often, you know, we're wanting God to do more for us and God is saying, why don't you use what I've already given you? Why don't you already kind of work out on the stuff that I've already planned uh, for him? I've planned for you. So we've got to do that. Yes, let's count everything else a loss for the sake of the gospel. Secondly, it needs to be based on love. Is it loving towards other people? Is it gonna? Do, is it gonna do that? Um, and and we've got to really grab a hold of that. So we we've got to learn to love. God wants us to learn to love. That's why we are in relationship. That's why a commitment to the body of Christ, a commitment into your connect group is so essential because you're going to rub shoulders. You're going to talk with people that you do not naturally like. You're going to be people that are odd, people that are eccentric, people that are weird, people that kind of, you think, every time they, you ask them a question, do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? You might even come across Borough fans. I don't know. <laughs> See, that ain't Teesside. Uh, I might not make it home. There you go. Um, but, but do you know what I'm trying to say? There's always a situation because God wants us to learn to love. Loving is not natural for us. Yes, we are selfish, self-centered people at our very core. So we are all about ourselves. And so many people get married because of what's in it for them. Yes? We do so often, don't we? We don't realize it. I married Kath. (laughs) Thought I'd get somebody that plays the piano, does kids' work. (laughs) I had my list. (laughs) So what I'm saying to you is, is what's the motivation behind what you're doing? Is it, is it loving? It's so important that we, we understand that. Thirdly, godly goals will fulfill one of God's purposes. And we talk a lot about that as a church, the five purposes that God has for us, because he wants us to know him. He wants us to grow to become like him. He wants us to serve like he served. He wants us to share the good news like he shared the good news. He wants us to honor the Father as he honored the Father. And those are kind of good goals. They're goals that God will bless. You see, if a goal isn't related in any way to the big five, as we call it, particularly for those from Africa, the big five, if they're not related to the big five, in other words, if it's not to do with worship, if it's not to do with fellowship and church, if it's not to do with your Christ-like character development, if it's not to do with serving God and, and seeing your gifts and your abilities and your experiences and the things that God has has put in you and things that you've developed and things that you've learned it should it should be about how do I serve God and about mission it's in other words God's given each of us an assignment we have an overarching assignment but within that we have an assignment God has designed us so specifically so that you can reach people that I can't reach and vice versa we have got together we can reach people because God has placed us here in Stockton to reach the people people of Stockton and so that's what I call upon our life is so if it's a goal about about being for God's pleasure if it's about uh, worshipping him if it's about serving him if it's about reaching the lost if it's about ministry in the church I want to say to you that's a a goal that God's pleased with that God will bless and I believe that more and more the older I get (laughs) You see, our goals shouldn't just be for the here and now. We need to have a very different perspective on our lives. We've got to have a perspective that's an eternal perspective. How does your goals impact eternity? How does it impact beyond this life? 
Because when we invest into people, when we invest and we don't just... You see, when we have a loving goal, we don't see people as projects. We see them as, as in the image of God and we see that everything about us is to love them as God loves us. And God wants us to develop that. Amen. So we need to have an eternal com uh, uh, perspective. Romans 6 says, Do not use any part of yourselves to sin or to be used for wicked purposes. Instead, give yourselves to God and surrender your whole being to him to be used for righteous purposes. Yes, godly goals have eternity at their very essence. Because if this life is all that you're living for, then of course you want goals that are just about this life. But if you have got eternity in mind and you're thinking long term and thinking beyond where you are, you're thinking beyond kind of what happens in this life and realize that some of the things in this life will affect eternity, I want to say to you, it would change the goals that you have. It would change the goals that you have about reaching your neighbors and your family and your friends and your work colleagues. It would change the goals about how you responded and how you act. That you're thinking, I, this isn't about me. This is about how I respond to this person because if I respond in a godly way then they will see God in me and that God in me the Christ in me will be able to set them free will be a reflection of God and I want the reflection of God do we not want the reflection of God that when we see him like Jesus when he was being transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration we see that he was like an inner transformation it was the glory of God was coming out of him it was a metamorphosis it was God in him was shining forth the Shekinah glory was seen I want to say to you that we are Christ on earth Christ in us the hope of glory amen it's Christ in us the Christ in me greets the Christ who lives in you it's the Christ that can make the difference and Jesus Christ is the one who can change every life and we've got to understand that so let's make sure that we have um, some goals that, uh, that serve the purposes of God in our generation amen so let's ask ourselves this simple question. God, what do you want me to do? Ask God that question. What do you want me to do? And ask it every single day of your life. Ask it, keep asking it. What today, part of the big picture, part of the goals that you've got for me, the big objectives, the big things, Lord, how does today fit in? What do you want me to do? I want to say to you, God speaks to you when you want to hear from him about things that are godly. Amen. Paul said this, I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. Every step had purpose. Amen. You see, Paul refused to be distracted. And the Bible often likens life to a race. And we're in a race. Now, it's not, it's not a, a, an hundred yard dash, as it were, or meters these days, I guess. It's not about hundred meters, it's a marathon. It's a lifelong process that we're going to go through. But there are some key things about a race. And the first thing about when you enter a race is you do not determine the finish line. When I've, I've entered into as a, as a young man, I once was young, I want to say to you, I loved running, I loved racing. Yes, probably because most of the time I won. But anyway, let's not, let's not brag about things that are, no. Um, but no, but seriously, when you're in a race, I didn't determine the track. I didn't determine the way around. I once went in a race, when I was uh, racing for the ATC, Air Training Corps, and I remember running, and there was a few of us running. Now, when we got back to base eventually on this cross-country run, we found out that we were miles behind the pack of everybody else. And the reason was, when we thought we were kind of coming in and there's nobody at the finish line and we're coming in, we're thinking, we're, yeah, we realised that actually everybody else had finished. They were having their lunch. We had gone the wrong course. 
So when you run the wrong course, you run the wrong race, if you don't run God's race, you're going to just keep veering off. You're never going to achieve. You can't find the finish post. You'll never find the finish pole that God has for you if you keep going in a different direction. If you go around in circles, God says he's determined your finish line. Your finish line. Your finish line is not my finish line. Yes, everybody has a separate finish line. Run towards the goal for the purpose of God for which he called you. He called you. He didn't just say, well, if you can be bothered, or I think it might be a good idea if they, if they go towards it. I want to say to you, that's the call of God. There is no greater call in this planet, while ever you're living on earth, than to run your race for Jesus Christ. It's the greatest race you'll ever run. And I want to say to you, run with all that you have. I want to say to you, we do not set the finish line. Amen. But I'll tell you what, God does, and he does do that. But the key to running this life is not whether you fall down. It's whether you keep getting back up again. And the Old Testament talks about a righteous man may fall down seven times, but he keeps on bouncing back up. It's like having a... It's like having one of them things, punch bags, and every time you hit it, it just comes back at you. You know what I mean? That's the kind of attitude we need to have, like bouncing a ball. Somebody might bounce us down and they think we're round and out. But I want to say to you, we just bounce back again with the energy and purpose of God in our life. God is looking for us to have that kind of things. I want to say to you, the setbacks that you have in your life are often God's setups. He's setting you up for something good. He's setting you up for something different. He's setting you up for a miracle. He's setting you up for transformation. He's setting you up to reach somebody who otherwise you would not be able to reach. He is doing that within us. Amen? Fourthly, godly goals are set in faith. Yes, so we're talking about Daniel plan. So a quick one. I won't stay long on this point. Quick one. Set some health goals. The majority of you here this morning have not signed up to Daniel Plan. So that tells me you have found some other alternative way to look after your health. That tells me that whatever we offer as a church and however much that we can believe in this as a leadership, however much around the world that the Daniel plan has gone and made a success, that you have decided that you will do your own thing. Now, you didn't come there this morning for that, did you? I know. You said, I didn't pay for this. But seriously, your call upon your life is to get part of what God's doing. And if you're part of this church, get part of it. Work, commit, get on board, do whatever. If the leadership asks you to do something, the Bible says, think about it. Does the Bible say, well, if you agree with it and it's all kind of, um, you know, kosher, everything's all, and it doesn't say that, does it? it the Bible Paul says very clearly, obey your leaders. Now, if I'm not your leader, don't bother. Yeah, but if you call this church your church, if you call this your family, then if you're part of the family, you pull your weight. Yeah, it's it's not a problem to me. I'd rather sit here with just me, Kath, Faith, Tracy, (laughs) Devation. Do you know what I'm trying to say? There are some people that are totally committed to this church. And they've proved it over and over and over again. They do it when nobody sees. They see it in the hard times. The times when there's, there's a battery in the times. I want to say to you, it's always easy to go and do a new thing. But stay committed. Stay planted. Stay planted when the wind is blowing. Stay planted when the storms are blowing. Stay planted when when there don't seem to be any buds growing. Stay planted when it looks barren. Stay planted when others are forsaking. I want to say to you, the end times, there's the promise that there will be a falling away. There's no promise of revival, but there is a promise of falling away. 
So let me ask you a question. Which group do you want to be in? Do you want to be in those that are found worthy? Those whose testimony was right in God, those who loved him with all their heart, their mind, their soul, with every aspect of their being? Or do you want to be those that actually gave in when things were tough? Or decided I'm not happy with that? I believe God is looking for a different kind of people. He's looking for people who understand church. That, they have, that you haven't just made a commitment to Christ, but you've made a commitment to Christ's body. And you've not only done that, you've had a conversion to Christ, a conversion to the church, a conversion to his cause, and a conversion of your wallet book. <laughs> it's a fact, isn't it? Some people, they, couldn't, they, couldn't, they, couldn't, they can't find the wallet. <laughs> and I don't believe everybody in here is a Yorkshireman. <laughs> anyway, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So let me ask you, do your goals... Does your life, is it stretching you? Is it pulling you? Is it growing you? Are you taking some risks? Do you need some faith? Is there any fear about if I do this, how it might turn out? I want to say to you, God is in goals that require you to be stretched. Where you think to yourself, I just can't do it anymore. Which brings us to point five. And I've only got 20 points. (laughs) Point five is this. Godly goals are achieved with God's power. On Amazon, and the problem is, is it changes every day, but there's nearly 100,000 books, self-help books. And some of them have some really good advice. I'm not knocking the advice that some of them things give. I'm not. But what they do not give you is the power to achieve it. When you know Jesus, he gives you the power. Yeah. Isn't that fantastic? So... When you have a God-ordained goal and you're working towards that, you have something that the rest of the world don't have. Because when God is with you, there is transformation. Amen? Amen. We don't need just good advice, do we? We need help. We need new power. We need a new perspective. And God wants us to have those in our heart and in our life. Let me finish with Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That's a hard one. That is hard because we often do. How hard is it to not trust your understanding? When God says something, and we don't understand it, that means there is a conflict. Because we then say, by faith, although I don't understand it, I am going to trust, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to obey, or you're going to say, I'm going to trust my own understanding, and I don't think that's right. And whenever you say, I, don't, I, I trust my own understanding, and I think I know best, you have stopped trusting in the Lord. And it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. So as we are in Daniel's plan, I want you to do a number of things. One, I want you to trust in the Lord. If you've never put your trust in the Lord today, I'm going to ask you today to put your trust in the Lord. You can have the connect card that's, that's just in front of you. Just write down, write your name and just write down, I trust Jesus. If you today want to trust Jesus, you want to put, put, put him at the very center of your life and say, today, I'm going to trust him. And you might be there thinking, well, I did, I've given my life to Christ and I do trust him. But then you realize there are areas in your life you don't trust him. And you know what them areas are, that you've not trusted him. If you can trust him today, then just put that down your card today. You, what, you know what that means to you. I don't need to know what that means. I, know you, I need you to know what it means because that's before you and God. But isn't that fantastic? Because there's a statement of faith today. When you write today on your Connect card, I trust Jesus Christ and I will live for him. And the second thing you can do is sign up for the Daniel plan. <laughs> get signed up. Get in there. Thirdly, get someone in your life, as Tracy talked about, who will help you, 
who will encourage you, who will spur you on, who can do life together with you. That will change us. Father, I want to thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, for anything that I have spoken that is not of you. I pray, God, that that would just wash over people. I pray, Lord, they would have been deaf at that point. But I do pray, Lord Jesus, that that which would spur them on to, Lord, today, to every single person here and those online and those who will listen to it later, I pray, oh God, that today they would say, today is the day when I want to be full on for Jesus. It's not an age thing. I want to say to you, at 60 years of age, I'm believing God for more than I've ever done. I believe that this next time, however long God gives us, it needs to be run a race full on. And Lord Jesus, I pray today that, Lord, that you would just put that in the heart of every single one, from the oldest to the youngest. Lord, we know it's not how well we start, but it's how well we finish. And I pray, God, today that we would have a church of finishers. We'd have a church of people who will finish the race, finish the assignment that you've got, finish the call that you've got on their life, that they will have fought the good fight, they would have run the race, they would have done absolutely everything in their power. I pray, God, that you would fill each one with your spirit today, empowering. I pray for those that need healing today would be healed. Your word says that if you heal us, we are healed. And I pray today that, Lord, that we would be healed. I pray for those that have physical healing today. I pray, God, for whatever that might be that's in in them today. Lord, whether it's an ache, whether it's a pain, whether it's a need for an operation, or whether it's some bad news on the health, whatever it might be, I pray today, whether it's it's a stomach, or whether it's it's headaches, or whether it's eyes, or ears, or nose, I pray today that, God, that you would heal in this place. I pray as faith rises today that your power would just fill every single person. I pray for those that are hurt. And they, 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 they've got their, their hurts, as it were, their, their wounds, and they're feeling broken. I pray today that they would know your healing power. I pray today that they would know that as they trust you, you can heal where no one else can reach. No one else can go into the very inner part of their being. I pray today there would be inner healing. I pray for those that with mental, whether discouragement or despondent, desperation today, whether they've, they're just feeling down, feeling mentally, they don't know whether they can keep going. I pray today that they would find hope. Lord, I, I thank you that your hope dispels all discouragement, all disappointments, Lord. We, Lord, when we have our hope in you, you never disappoint. And I pray for that, Lord, today, that there would be a perspective change in every single person in this place and those listening online, that they would see from your vantage point, they would see from heaven, they would see what you see today. They would see that they're chosen, see that they're called, see that, see that they that they can do great things, see that, they, that you have put everything within them to be a success. I ask that in Jesus' lovely and precious name. Thanks for listening today. If this message spoke to you and you would like prayer, or perhaps this is your first time listening, then we'd love to connect with you at www.thedestinychurch.co.uk forward slash connect. You're welcome to join us every Sunday in person or online at 11am.